when I came to Australia, I saw long queues of people waiting for jobs, and that was in 1928. Woody couldn't get work in Melbourne. He tried many places. Well, life was pretty grim. I wasn't interested politically in, at that period. I did all my severe learning in Karambara. Well, nobody, I think, could uh, realize the spirit of defeatism that was in the trade union movement. Uh, as I say, the waterfront workers were defeated, the timber workers were defeated, the miners were defeated. And uh, the, uh, there was a whole era of pessimism. There wasn't any leader given any lead anywhere. And uh, uh, plus the fact, of course, that uh, in the midst of uh, a capitalist uh, crisis of overproduction, nobody just knew what to do about it all. For many long years now, we've all done our best. And we sent out the coal to the north, south and west. We heard of the rumors that trouble was due. It has all come to pass now. Alas, they were true. Oh, farewell to your sunbeam. I know your roads well. Your work has been good, and your work has been hell. It's out of your high Spiky gates I will throw. Fare you well to you, sunbeam. You're a dirty old hole. I had been a member of the Presbyterian Church, but I had some disagreement with the Presbyterian minister, and I decided that the Presbyterian Church was no place for me. And I decided I'd join the Salvation Army. I didn't realize at the time what a snip they'd got with what had been a well-known communist. I'll fix that up. Come on, Blue. Come on. Here you go. Come on. Come on. Come on. You've got him into the Melbourne Cup this year, Gregory. The morning shift would start work at 8am. Conditions were dreadful. There was no minimum pay. You can take a bite in the daylight now. Air had to be pumped down from the surface. Moving. Get in. There was barely enough to bring. Jesus Christ, look at that. You must be using a bloody big shovel, eh? I wouldn't put it past you. You got paid by the token. 
Each miner had a different number on his token and placed it on his skip when it was full of coal. The worst crime a miner could commit was to swap his own token for someone else's. Now, when we obey someone we love, we obey them because of that love. So when we obey our Heavenly Father, we obey him not through fear, but through love. For instance, if you do something for your mum or dad, you do it because you love them, not just because you have to. Hey, the missus put the clamps on you this morning, mate. Okay, uh, let's make a start. to go down the road to do some shopping and you wanted to play, would you not go for her? Yes, ma'am. I'd go. Now, why would you go for her? Well, I'd get a bloody good spanking if I didn't. <laughs> Pity it wasn't you, Doig. I tell you now, the next man that breaks safety regulations gets a sack on the spot. Right.
over there. At it again, King. Gentlemen. Well, we hear that you've been uh, exchanging the skip talkers. All right, lads, meeting up the top. There's nothing to be alarmed at. The man's dropped for a long time now. How do you know this? He did tell me, he told me there's trouble brewing. I'm warning you two. Not one more peep out of either of you. to Doig. Well, we believe that you've been sacking men for not observing the safety regulations. What do you call all this then, eh? Is this observing the safety regulations? Oh, now, I'm going to read to you a list of decisions made by the men. One. We do not work down the mine without adequate ventilation. Two that a minimum rate of 14 shillings per shift be introduced. And three, we will not go down the mine with Sam King. Or any other company paid thief. I'll have you in court for that, Bill. Why? And how will you explain the missing skip tokens to you, bastard? You, lock the mine. Right. Get back in your hole.
Well, you haven't seen my husband anywhere, have you, Mrs. Doig? Didn't he get into some strife down the mine? What he said, he should be thrown out of town for swapping tokens. Did he not mention anything? Well, don't let me see you out and about, or there'll be trouble. I'll be back to see him tomorrow. You're there, Waddy. Couldn't find a bloody house in the dark. by aeroplane on Wednesday when Mr. J.B. Fairbairn, MP, arrived at the Dalliston show. It is something to appreciate that political opponents can still show a spirit of kinship by taking a man in his plane on a matter in which opinions naturally vary. Thank you, please. Good evening. 
like to apologize for the haste in calling you all together for this the very first communist party meeting in Kolombura. But the unfortunate events which took place earlier on today at the Sunbeam Colliery deemed it necessary that we organize the men as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Welcome once again to our weekly praise meeting. The apostle for today is St. Andrew. So I hope you've all prepared your text starting with the letter A. I'd like you to extend a warm welcome to Comrade Idris Williams, President of the One Thaggy Branch of the Miners' Federation of Australia. And also to Comrade Meg Turner, who has come over as representative of the Miners' Women's Auxiliary in One Thaggy. I'll now hand you over to Comrade Doig, who will conduct elections for the Executive and uh, give a report. Thank you. <coughs> Comrade Chairman, Comrades. As Comrade Bell has already mentioned, this is the inaugural assembly. Aye. This is the inaugural assembly. What's that? The first bloody meeting. Oh. Right. Right. <coughs> we are at the brink of a long and desperate battle with the management of the Sunbeam Colliery here at Kalambara. He was not that light but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him... Comrades, first, I think we need to form a broad committee to somehow coordinate all the various activities and organizations and groups and everything to raise the finance for the miners and their wives. Now, one of the reasons that we won the one thaggy struggle was the women's auxiliary. Now, the whole nature of the women's auxiliary can be much better explained to you by Comrade Meg. A new commandment give I unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you. Revelations 3, verse 19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Thank you, Mrs. Doig. And may the Lord add his blessing. Uh, we shall all sing together song number 680. 680. Comrade Chair and comrades, may I suggest we celebrate the arrival of our esteemed General President, Mr. Charlie Nelson, by passing a motion that will be put to the next union meeting to the effect that every member of the Miners' Federation of Corumburra become card-carrying members of the Australian Communist Party. Here we are. Now, as much as we appreciate the uh, comrades' good intention in this matter, I must object to that. Anyway, comrades, think what the Tories would say. Ah, oh, bugger the Tories. Well, if there's no more business to attend to, uh, I'll call on Comrade Doyle to make the decisions of the meeting. Comrade Chair, that we depart from convention, finish this meeting with a rousing rendition of the red flag. All those in favour?
Agnes! What are you doing out here? Getting cold. Oh. Yeah, we're on strike now. I think I've gathered that by now. Well, why don't you come away inside? With all those cronies of yours they're missing and a red flag forever. Well, they've all gone home. All right, then. Don't you ever do that to me again, Morty. What? I've never been so embarrassed in my life. There am I at the Salvation Army meeting, and you lot singing your heads off. Oh, my God. Sign the letter saying you leave town. So. Looks like you got visited. Yes, Mrs. King. I'll just bring all this stuff in there. Come on now. Can't be all that bad. Got myself into that trouble here. No, you're sort of royal. You'd better come in. Come on, Josie. something for you. Mm. What do you think I might have here? I'll just, oh yes, I might. No, I'll just see if I can find something. I got these in the shop today. Mm. There you are. Do you want those? Yeah, that's for you. Oh, mm. you dropped one. Don't drop it. Shall I have this one? No. You have it. Okay. Oh, we dropped it again. One, two, three, four. Now, we can all starve together. It seems to me that men who have come to a district foreigner and take on what they know nothing about. Those men can only be professional scabs willing to break a union for a small fee. It is not only the economic conditions that force men to do this. The company refuses to listen or even discuss the situation with the union. Mr. Batch, the manager, has had a lot to say. And although he has had considerable mining experience, he is not always right. The directors say that the mine does not pay and that they cannot afford higher wages. Yet, I've had a great deal of experience with coal mining and companies, a great deal of experience, and I have never yet met a board of directors so keen to exploit their employees like Messrs. Downey, Batch and Company. <laughs> Mr. Nelson, President of the Australian Miners Federation. Mr. Idris Williams. <laughs> the Sunbeam Colliery is well known by all miners to have the worst pay and worst conditions of any mine in the Commonwealth. 
In fact, the entire world. Since November 17th, 1935, we have made every effort to have a meeting with the board of directors. And twice, we have been told that this is impossible to meet with the board of directors. The reason being that the chairman is in Western Australia having a holiday. <laughs> now, I've been asked to announce that an evening of community singing will be held at the Soldiers Hall in Karambara next Sunday night, and that I will have the pleasure of conducting that evening. <laughs> The uh, local member of parliament, Mr. W. G. Mackenzie, MLA. I don't want the public to get the idea that I'm sitting on a fence. I've never done that, and I never will. <laughs> I've been told by Mr. Downey, director of the mine, that he had not received a director's fee for 15 years. <laughs> mine was only kept going in the interest of the men. The Labour Party is behind the men in this struggle and will do everything in its power to help. The public need not expect too much. After all, the seamen and the wharf labourers have just been beaten. Who boy? Tell us that, eh? Yeah, the trade hall. No, no, not the trade hall, my friend. If you want to know, scab Labour beat them. The trade hall! Since Scab Labour's been mentioned, Mr. Chairman, I'm surprised to know some are present here at this meeting. If we could let Mr. Mackenzie continue. Well, no one here has anything to say on this matter, then not go away and fail to... Oh! I'll now open the meeting to any questions or comments from members of the audience. Mr. Chairman, I've been listening very closely to what all the speakers had to say. And I've heard our own Labour Member of Parliament, Mr. Mackenzie, quoted as saying that the trouble at the Sunbeam Colliery was fermented by an ex wampaggy agitator. I'd just like to say that it makes me cross when I see my husband and other militants of the Miners' Federation and the Communist Party slandered by our own Labour parliamentarian when the true worth of these people is apparent for all to see. Thank you. Chance? Haven't bought all day like some, mate. Uh, can you forget that new piece? Rocky! 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 Oh, did you just call me? Did you? What are you doing there? You're playing in that water. Oh, look. Agnes is making us a sandwich. Do you want some of that sandwich? Yeah. No? Oh. Ooh, I want to be all in uniform. Push off. It's nothing to joke about. You know, look, we promised your father we wouldn't let you lose your religion, eh? And I won't have you dropping it for no political choice to fancy. And what about last night? Fashion scabs wasn't exactly in line with the spirit of the meeting, was it? Well, that's nothing compared to what they've been doing to us, love, is it? giving them a wash. <coughs> and uh, what's happened to Mrs. High and Mighty then? She's still in bed. Mm, Mum's still in bed. What do 
Yankees. They've got a scab down the mine. Come out this way. Hello, I just. We'll be back later. Oh, right. And this is Doig? Yes. I'm afraid I have to ask you a few questions uh, about an incident concerning a miner at the Sunbeam Colliery. It's for no miner. Well, that doesn't alter the fact that, uh, that a miner was... It's for no miner. I wasn't there and I've a witness to prove it. And it's only the fact that I have an enormous amount of self-control and patience that keeps me sitting here against my will, listening to all this drivel and trumped up clap trap. I know the conditions we have to live under, and I know what it's like to starve even when the men are working. So I'll not have any pumped up little squirt telling me who's a criminal and who's not. And if it wasn't for this uniform I'm wearing, I'd be out there with the rest of them causing trouble and making life hard for upstarts like yourself. Looks like the Salvation Army won that one. Did you see his face? Eh? You've got a real gift for public speaking, you know that? What's he interrupt me for? I'm just beginning to enjoy myself. You know the situation, bud. What are they doing there? They've been brought in to detect the scabs, sir. Jeez, that's all we bloody need to start a revolution. Workers all over the world are under attack from the ruling classes who are supporting the fascist regimes in Germany and have unleashed a savage civil war against the democratic elected government of Spain. Fellow workers, the capitalist class finds the money for war, but not for jobs. Children go hungry, while men queue up here for a lousy dole payment. Here in Currumburra, the miners at the Sunbeam Colliery have been locked out by the mine management, merely for wanting a living wage and better working conditions. Our men are ruining their health by working in foul air. Our families barely have enough to eat when the men are working, not to mention when they're on strike. Ernie Davis. Yours hasn't arrived yet, Ernie. What do you mean it hasn't arrived? I mean what I say, it hasn't arrived yet. Nothing I can do about it. Name? Patrick. their lives. If other workers support them, they can win. Tonight, seven, seven, seven. Thanks, mate. Oh, this is ridiculous. We're just having a spectacle. Hey, Eric. How'd you go on that Susso job then? Oh, we've got them organized all right. But my bloody Susso hasn't come through. What do you mean it hasn't come through? That's what I say, it hasn't come through. They said for me to try some other time. Bugger them. I'll get in touch with Idris. We'll call a meeting for this Sunday. Or we'll bring out a leaflet. Union organizer struck off Susso for militancy. That's just what we wanted. Good man. What about my 34 and 6? 
Don't worry about it. I thought you were told to take care of yourself. For goodness sake, darling, it's to you get on to me now. I've just had, just about had luck. Walked around them spikes, putting out them pamphlets. Have a cup of tea. Yes, Agnes, it might do me. Room does me a bit of a good. public meeting held at Carambara on the 12th concerning an industrial dispute at the Sunbeam Colliery. The directors of the company concerned have issued a statement. There has been no dispute about wages paid. Those working at the colliery know that they are capable, if they like to work, of earning amounts equal to those earned by men similarly employed in other mines. <laughs> what a lot of old dodge. Since the commencement of the year, within a period of 34 working days, the miners worked only 25 days, and four stop work meetings were held. Okay. Their wages have been regularly paid every fortnight, but the owners of the colliery have not received any... Hello, Lenny. What he told me about your trouble? It's good stuff. What we've done is organize a meeting next Sunday, we'll put it to the people. It's great stuff. What do you got here, then? Yes, sir. I was going to tell you about this. You see, I, I bumped into the town clerk and told him about the meeting. You what? And he says to me the old money has just come through. So he gave me the 34 and 6 <laughs> and a few things for the missus. You sacrificed the entire working class struggle for 34 and 6 and a bundle of bloody clothes. Shut up, Woody. <laughs> Woody. The union method of amicable settlement Sorry. includes the intimidation of yeah. persons who have been employed to keep the mine going, including the operations of the Basha gang from Wontagi. Are we to understand from the meeting that the public of Karambara prefer to support this type of individual, or do they prefer the mine to be kept open and respectable employees retained in its employ? The director's alternative is to close the mine. In conclusion, it is regretted that Mr. Doig, at least, did not exhibit some of the courage which he claims to have shown by informing the speakers that some of their statements were over the odds, a fact which he well knew. Hey, Jeff. Oh, Billy, what's going on? Oh, the police have been brought into Rose Hill. Everyone's fit to explode. Yeah. Now, for some reason, they're not being left on the tunnel. And the police have been here all morning. So that... Yeah, let's talk to them. I don't think... They're not getting anywhere. No one's going to hurt you. I'm scared. I recognise him. He's been 20 sharp. State coal mine. I'm sluggy. Yeah. Got laid off in 32. Went to Melbourne for work. Doesn't look like he got any. Come on, thank you, man. A coal miner. Just look up here. Unlock this or what? Which 
trying to get them out. They should be up by this afternoon. Oh. Well, you heard the man. Oh. He'll on our side. Yeah. Yeah. Position to you. And we'll get you, bastard. Right now, up. you have taken the jobs of men who can't survive while they're working, let alone when they're on strike. Now, our proposition is this I don't know how much they're paying you, and I don't care where you come from, but we will give every man ten pounds to take home if he's at the railway station tomorrow morning. Yeah, well, what if we don't? He's got jelly! It's gonna go off! Get out of your head down! Seven o'clock tomorrow. Ten pounds in your hand. Okay. Sign your name. Sign your name. Just sign your name here. Que cosa, de no, me vol a saber cómo te llamas. A nombre. Vlado Basi. Sign your name here. Gospodine, hvala. Hvala vam puno. Hvala vam puno. Sign your name here.
very much, Jimmy. Oh, but you remember to cut it, Nico, man. Play around, Mrs. He came up here fit to bust. Officer. Good afternoon. When the black leg biner creeps to work with his moleskin pants and his dirty shirt, there goes the black leg miner. He takes his tools and down he goes to hew the coal that lies below. There's never a woman in our town row will look at the black leg miner. Join the union while you may, don't wait till your dying day. That may not be far away, you dirty black leg miner. Oh, don't go near the Austral mine, across the way we stretch a line to catch the foot and break the spine of the dirty black leg miner. Sunbeam, it's a terrible place to rub wet clay in a black leg face. Round the hill we run a foot race to catch the black leg miner. So join the union while you may, don't wait till your dying day. That may not be far away, you dirty black leg miner. Oh, take your duds and your tools as well, hide them down the pit of hell. Down you go and fare you well, you dirty black leg miner. Join the union while you may, don't wait till your dying day. That may not be far away, you dirty black leg miner. Ladies and gentlemen, please arrive, Edward Williams. Sorry I'm late. That's the way it goes, eh? Um, I'd like to sing you a song now. You probably probably won't have heard of it or know about it, but I, I need your help. Uh, cockles and Mussels. Dobro lijepo, znaš. Hvala. Kako ti je ime? Znaš, ja imam ženu i dve deta, znaš. Hvala, boys. Ti je za mi? Mi je da 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 je. Lovely evening, isn't it? 
young kids up at this time, man. It's the middle of the bloody night. I demand to know what we're being kept here for. I think you know that, Mr. Doig. You're making a bloody fool of yourself. You know that, don't you? Fine to see it now. Union voice. Headlines. Union organizer victimized for militant stand. Police action despicable, says the Reverend Busby. Come on, get in here. Here's your prize witness. He doesn't even speak English. Banners are lowered, they droop on the street, and the pace of our sorrow is marked by our feet. We bring to a rest that his life never knew, our comrade who lived and died to save us from the foe. a deep sympathy for the miners, a deep sympathy for the cause. I was beginning to realize the falsity of things.
Here's what he knows. That's how he did it. Good night, Wade. How are you? Good night, Good night. Like them? How are you? Good night, Good night. Good night. Hey. Well, you like a different one? Do you like a different one? Yeah. Well, work is weekly. Work is weekly. Brothers! Last night, the secretary of our local branch here in Karambara had an attempt made on his life by one of the company's hired gun tanks. You can see before you the sort of action you a friendly police force are willing to take on the matter. We have all the forces of this state against us, willing to kill people just so they can get their own way. In Lee and Gatha, there are 100 police standing by in case of trouble. Right. We've got work to do. Together, we have a gun in our hand. If we drop it, they'll kick us to death. For God's sake, don't drop it! Endo has some sugar too. Morning, Agnes. Morning, Liz. I'd like some bread, please. Right you are, then. A half loaf Thank or you. a whole. How's Margaret? Oh, fine, thanks. Fine. Uh, you and Watty must come round to tea in Sunday. Oh, I don't think so, Liz. Watty can't stand capitalists, even if they are relatives. Oh. Well, a half or a whole? I want you to do me a favour. I'm going to place an order and I'm going to pay cash. But the moment I buy these groceries, I want you to forget that I've ever made such a purchase. You must be kidding. It's essential that no one finds out. Are you sure he won't tell anyone? He'd better not. He's my brother-in-law. <laughs> He's not going to knock back 50 pounds on the counter now, is he? <laughs> ah, thanks, Antonia. Should have blown the bloody thing up by now. You chewed the top of the skin. That's it, buds. 
All right, Dad. Give him hell. Watch it over there. So you do as you're told and you'll not get into any trouble. Now we've flown in that back heading. So you tell back, it's no use trying to get in that way either. Uh, plenty of grease there, Harry. That'll dust him up a bit. Hey, the step, Jordy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, anyone else who wants to leave? Now's the time. Pick up, lad. Okay. Call in the hall. You go easy with that jelly knife. Like. You don't want to get anyone to be hurt. You just want the publicity, okay? to read it. As of 12 o'clock tonight, the striking miners of the Sunbeam Colliery in Karambara have barricaded themselves into the main heading of the mine in order to bring attention to their plight and demands for a living wage and better working conditions. <laughs> Now what the kind of woman was young enough to take the tail? 
He couldn't be left to carry me up, so he threw me to the wind. Oh, when I'm glad he comes and tells me I'm not his tool. Yes. Why the heck weren't we told about it? The stay in strike could only succeed if complete secrecy was maintained. The only people to know about it were the district management committee and three members of the women's auxiliary. And we know where their hearts lie, don't we? In bloody Russia! That's them, all right. I'm afraid we didn't bring enough food for all you lot, too. You get out of it, Joy. You're not going to ruin this mine. Right. <laughs> we warn you that you're trespassing on private property. And unless you remove yourselves peacefully, we should be forced to arrest you. Just quiet! Come up! I advise you to come up peacefully before anyone gets hurt. Okay. Take the bloody thing apart. Here they come, right? Right! Get the bastards! Get going! Come on, stop! Come on, stop! Come on, stop it! Go home! I want you to get down the corner!
but not in bloody France. Are you all right, Les? I implore you, please, come out before anyone is seriously injured. The men are not coming out until the management agrees to the Federation's demands. in this book. I'll go to her. She's a salvationist. You can do them from here down. We set out to organize backup support for the men. Mr. Birch, can you give us a statement on the situation of the colliery? It's now 10 o'clock on Wednesday morning. We've turned the air compressors on for the men below. So far we've received no motion or request from them, and as far as I'm concerned, they can stay down there till they rot. Have you ever heard of miners taking action like this before? Now, if you model yourself on the one faggy women's auxiliary, it wasn't a big auxiliary, but it was a strong auxiliary. We had a gallant little band of women. Relief is the distribution of food to the needy. That's it. Entertainment would be keeping up the morale of the men throughout the struggle, and propaganda is making sure that the papers get both sides of the story. Yes. Yes. About 12 o'clock last night, they brought down the two back headings. Yes, sir. Dr. Freeman's here to see the injured miners. Where is he? Here. Yeah. Those miners broke into the mine at their own risk. Any injury they might have inflicted upon themselves as a consequence is their own problem. And if you attempt, so much as attempt, to go into that mine, I'll have you arrested for trespassing like that. Clear? Unused as I am to public speaking, I shall be brief and to the point. The notices of the 1st of September were an attempt to break the men and the union. The men would go out and the mine owners could employ anyone. Well, yesterday, even the scabs couldn't take any more, and they went on strike until their grievances were heard. You're a liar! <laughs> even if you are Edward Birch, you'll behave yourself or get out, like anyone else. I think it only fair to warn those noisy shopkeepers and businessmen down the back that we're taking note of anyone who heckles or speaks out of turn. We have formed a Coromborough Miners Women's Auxiliary, who have unanimously pledged their support and backing of the men in their struggle for a living wage and better conditions, which is the right of all working people.
Why don't you join in, lads, eh? I don't you know the words. shop here, don't they? Well, they don't anymore. You're on the blacklist. What about the others? What about Dr. Freeman? Dr. Freeman? Was he there, carrying on? Right then. We'll boycott Dr. Freeman, too. But we'll also make sure he finds out who told us. Bloody red bitches. <laughs> going to boycott Dr. Freeman? Of course not. Health comes before politics. He's the only doctor for miles. A large group of women came. There was quite a few. One saggy came down with us. And a very strong group marched down on Karambara Mine. We were all intent on one thing. That we would meet these miners in the best of spirits when they came out at three o'clock. men didn't come out. The men have been down the mine now for almost 56 hours. We've heard nothing. This dispute has been in progress for almost six weeks. Thank you. 
It's now five o'clock. We have achieved everything that we set out to do. He's right, comrades. But we can't back out now. Not until they agree to our demands. Well, if he's right, cutting our own throats. We're supposed to be out of here at three o'clock. Right. I am leaving now. Anyone who wants to come with me, they're welcome. He's right, lads. We've made our point. Let's go and get our photos taken. And so he goes on, day in and day out, to toil for his life's daily bread. He's off to the mine in the rain, hail or shine, that his dear ones at home might be fed. With his calico bag and his old flannel shirt, Pants with a strap around the knee. His boots water tight and his lamp all light. His crib and his billy of tea. I'm proud to be a member of the working class. They've done heroic things. And they'll do more heroic things. 